It's Scotland to run from the right. 2015, the final for the final. And immediately, Australia in possession. Scotland just holding on at the moment. Out the back for Foley. And Kurandrani, he held on. To Vita Kurandrani, Ashley Cooper. Adam Ashley Cooper gets the first try. He rode the challenge of Tommy Seymour and Seymour came off his wing and Kudadrani just bashed it away and then he had the composure as well. Look, the Stu are getting a lot of joy in the outside channels. There's Seymour coming up, Kudadrani bashes it away and the composure to execute the two and one where, well, Adam Ashley Cooper, he's a proven try scorer. He scores his 34th international try. There's the power and then the composure and Ashley Cooper, well, he dives over in the corner. Famous dive, we see it so often. <coughs> And Adam Ashley Cooper lost one of his great schoolboy friends, Gus Grinham, last week. He was here in a hospital trolley in one of the hospitality suites on oxygen. Adam Ashley Cooper, after the game, climbed the grandstand to see his mate who died just a couple of days ago. So the Wallabies playing for the late Gus Grinham and his family, his wife and two young children. This is also new territory for Bernard Foley. This is his first ever match against Scotland. It's just the five-pointer then for Australia after ten minutes. Yeah, and all the possession, all the territory really going to us and all the points so far. There's the distribution, the two key players working together and Foley and Getu and then Kudrani with the power and the precision of the pass and the wonderful attacking supporting line of Adam Asher Cooper, the swan dive and it's a deserved 5-0 lead for Australia. And it was a nice touch to see the two coaches Vern Cotter and Michael Checker chatting before the game, they both have huge respect and they know each other of course with Checker's stint in Ireland and also in France. 100th penalty for Scotland coming up, and there it is. And the gap down to two points. Greg Laidlaw, the crowd now getting behind the Scots. It's 10 metres out. Smashing low tackle there by Will Guinea. Use it! Australia 5-3. The Wallabies have conceded only two tries in the tournament so far. And here we go! That's the third one. They were caught nothing. And Peter Horn is Scotland's hero. Well, sometimes the easiest way is right over the top of the ball. The shot is through between A and B. And Peter Horn, he realised there was no defence in behind the ruck. He picked it. He's usually in the midfield. He finds himself in the ruck and picks right over the top of the ball. Dutch down for his second international try under the sticks. Look at this. The pressure comes on. Ford carries through the first tackle and number 12 Peter Horn there's no defender I'll take the space and look at that first to react and a try well it was an open gate wasn't it the whole flock of sheep could have gone through there <laughs> you see Simmons just at guard on the left hand side he has a look to his right where usually there'd be a player in behind there defending that challenge but it was free it was open Peter Horn has a calm head in a cauldron of an atmosphere, and Greg Lidl adds the extras. Well, the Scots have averaged 146 tackles a match. But they did their tackling early on, and then they've come back hard at the Australians. And they have a nice lead now. They've hit double figures, it's 10-5. Well, we watched Greg Laidlaw practicing his kicks from this region. Um, it's comfortably within his range, and his accuracy was uncanny. He duly does the job, and Scotland are out to an eight point advantage. Oh, 
Vardy has a crack. Vonage. Oh, so it's been slowed down. Guinea goes himself. So does Hooper. The Indian rubber ball man. Scotland. That's CEO. Now there's a chance for Australia. Big numbers. Beal. Drew Mitchell. 13th Rugby World Cup try for Drew Mitchell. Only two behind the great Jonah Lomu and Brian Habana. Wow, fantastic player. A well worked try by Australia. They kept knocking at the door. Scotland's defence held firm. But after so many tackles, so much pressure, the space was on the outside. And that man, on the outside, left hand wing, got to try. This came after 12 or 13 phases. Two wonderful long passes from Foley, then Buell. And you can see an easy run in for Drew Mitchell. Kirtley Beale played his early football in Mount Druitt, and, and that was in, in rugby league before winning a scholarship to St Joseph's College. And they'll be up in the boarding houses at Hunters Hill. Australia's 200th World Cup try scored by Drew Mitchell. Yeah, had to work hard for it. They had to work really, really hard for it. Scotland's defence was was standing firm. They were penalised, so they were playing a penalty advantage. The students took advantage of that and managed to get from one side of the field to the other and outflank a defence. Drew Mitchell finishing off in Foley. Well, and an opportunity from wide out. Missed his first one from the, the right touch line. He's going to try his luck from the left touch line. Michael Checker says of this man, he's cool, he can think fast, and he has a very good temperament. But Australia needs his goal-kicking boot at the moment. Two unconverted tries for Australia means they still trail by three. 16 in the Six Nations. He doesn't miss, does he? The lead back out to six. Simmons calls. Scott Barty, the man. Hooper has it at the back here. Scotland go down. The backs join in. Wallaby's looking for their third try. Try. Yes. Michael Hooper comes up with the ball. And that is a telling score by the Wallabies, a badly needed one. Michael Hooper in his 49th test match gets his eighth try. Okay. Yeah, he's got a big smile on his face. He was in control of the ball the whole time. Good decision to go to the corner. They see number seven, Michael Hooper, is bound the whole time. Adam Asher Cooper comes in to help. He's in control of the ball the whole time as Scotland tried to disrupt it, to bring it down. It was always under Cooper's control. And we thought there was a slight doubt in the grounding, but there was none at all. Well done, Craig Joubert. Right on the mark. He awards a try. Genny is happy. Kuradran is happy. Is Michael Checker happy? Ah, you betcha. Foley was 17 from 19 before this game. He needs to kick this to make it one from three. It's just not happening for Bernard Foley, and the Wallabies find themselves trailing by a point at the break here at Twickenham. A very exciting first half. Scotland putting the acid on the men in goal. It's 16-15 to the Bonnie Scots. Yeah, and it was bookended by Australia's good performance. Wasn't the start and the end of the half. In between, it was all about Scotland. Australia behind on the scoreboard, despite scoring three tries to one. And Bernard Foley, whose kicking boot deserted him in the first half, gets proceedings underway. Beal tapped it back. And CO comes down with the ball. Clever ploy there by the Australians. Oh, he just lost that ball. Douglas is at the back. It's going to be Barty again. Use it once. Hooper now with the counter drive. Australia will want to keep it up here. 
Scotland in trouble. Guinea. Mitchell. He gets a brace. Clever call there by Will Guinea. He saw the space on the left and Drew Mitchell gets his second try. Well, there were so many quality pieces of skill and execution in that move to the to the purest. A wonderful score from Asuya. The driving mall was set up defending initially well by Scotland. But then as Asuya crabbed right, there was a wonderful offload from Hooper to Guinea and Guinea set. Mitchell away in the corner, that there was just dropped out the back door. The communication between seven and nine was absolutely phenomenal. Mitchell kept his width and managed to score. There was some sublime touches of skill in that score for Australia. He scored a hat-trick against the Russians in Rugby World Cup in 2011. He's two-thirds of the way there, and he got a couple against Uruguay as well. And it's another touchline conversion for Foley. There you go, kick success, not from three, but all from very similar, two on the right. This is his second on the left in the five metre. As a kicker, you, you hope to learn from your, your missed attempts, put right, what went wrong. And we'll see how Foley comes out here. Perseverance pays off for Bernard Foley. It's a new half and a new chapter for the Wallabies. If he's successful here, he'll join Sanchez as the joint top scorer in the tournament. Looking for his fourth penalty goal. Never in doubt. Scotland closes the gap to just three in the 47th minute. Sailing through the uprights, and Australia has it out to a six-point advantage once more. Guinea quickly then for Foley. And there's a try for Scotland. Well, it should have been. He couldn't go on with it, but now Seymour. Foley's kick has been charged down, and it's a gift for the Scots. Well, Scotland take the lead again. Tommy Seymour with his fifth try in a row. Five internationals in a row. His fourth in the World Cup 2015. It came from a charge down from Finn Russell on Foley. They reacted quickly. A wonderful tackle here by Will Guinea. But there it is, the pop off the ground by Finn Russell. The pace from Tommy Seymour, the dive in the corner. And what a time to score for Scotland. The vision of Finn Russell is it just calmly pops the ball up and the finish from Tommy Seymour what a roar that made that here inside Twickenham Grinding all good Ben sorry say again and okay, Scotland thanks. now equaling their highest ever score against the Wallabies Scotland Downing the Wallabies at Murrayfield, 24-15 in 1981. And Edinburgh was frozen over. The city was under a foot of snow. This to put his side in the lead. But no joy, so Australia clinging by a point. Pito yes. standing in the hooking position, Australia pinch it. Pelota now gets the cross. Back to Holmes. McCalvin, the workhorse. Burndrani, right in front of the goalpost now for Australia. Hooper. Backwards. Fadi. On side, yeah. Pilotta now looking for that canvas on the post. Burndrani, can they stop him? He got it! He did it to the Springboks, and he's done it here to Scotland. Kurundrani crosses for the fifth Australian try. He had to work hard for it. A wonderful finish, he stretched through the tackle of John Hardy. He uses all of his six-foot-five frame. It came from the stolen line-out. Rob Simmons getting up in front 
of David Denton. Tomata now reacting first, and here's the stretch. Hardy, laid low with a tackle, six foot five frame. Okundrani reaches the line. Well, they'll be cheering at the Leilin Memorial School in Suva. That's where he was a boarder. The school that produced Waisali Serevi and also the Fijian captain, Akapusi Ungira. Well, Cheka looks slightly more relieved. It's Kundrani. Three defenders to bring him down. <laughs> And he still had the reach just to make the line for the students. Fifth try. This game's just going from back and forward. Great entertainment. Again, this is a crucial kick for Foley because it would put Australia out beyond the converted try margin. Struck it well. And Australia has it by eight to beat a current Rani. So the margin then, back to five points. Five penalty goals to Greg Laidlaw. Also one conversion, a personal tally of 17 points. Well, some boring in there by the loose heads. All is out. For Scotland. Cleedy there on the spider cam. Slippery ball, feel underneath. Safe as houses. Yeah. Slip up. Oh! No! Bennett! Mark Bennett has stolen it! And is that the winning play for Scotland? Well, Mark Bennett roots the pass, I think it's Slipper. The first receiver, it's a long pass from Gennett. Slipper David and then Floyd throw it. Mark Bennett read it from out to in. Sprints clear. Third try in Rugby World Cup and scores beneath the posts. There he is, his slipper. The double pump, the read from Mark Bennett, and no one's going to stop him. Under the sticks, a conversion to come. Wow. Scotland have scored two tries in this game, and they've both been Christmas presents from the Wallabies. Conversion then to put Scotland in the lead with just under six to go. The crowd confirm it. Torrential rain. Shades of Newcastle in 2012. Will it be the same result? Well, Mark Bennett read it all the way. They recognise the loose head puff at first to see with a delight on Sean Maitland and Mark Bennett's face. The game's not over. Two minutes remaining. Oh, no! In front. The referee has ruled in front. a penalty infringement. The man in front of a Scottish hand. And Australia now has a kick to hit the front. What a pressure attempt here for Bernard Foley. Well, the throw just slightly too high, Denton got a hand to it and then here it's knocked forward from Hardy and grabbed up by John Welsh it's almost impossible it's almost impossible, instinct doesn't allow yeah. you to pull out when everything's happening, it'd be good to see that in real time, to see how little time John Welsh has a harsh call, but it's a call that's been made, here we are in real time ball comes forward from Strauss it did John appear Welsh. to come off the shoulder there. Did it come off the shoulder of the Scottish player? John Welsh couldn't get his hands away in time, but the pressure now falls on Foley. Big oh. moment. Australia's fate in this World Cup is now on the right boot of this man. This for a semi final spot. The Iceman does it. Heartbreak for Scotland. There is still one last gasp, though, for the men in blue. Seconds remaining. Last 30 seconds. Scotland's point of view, they have to get this kickoff back, but well done, Bernard Foley, under pressure. He'd missed kicks earlier on. He nailed that one.
taken by Kurandrani. Australia now can't afford to concede a penalty. Use it! Referee watching closely. Ten seconds to go. Australia just have to run the clock down here. They'll kick it into touch. And Australia's through to the semi-final. There was plenty of controversy in the game, but that was the great escape. Devastation for Bird Scotter and the Scottish team.